welcome to Mash Buttons Monday. So the first thing I want to talk about is how newcomers always see a lot of top level players playing their fighting game and they see a bunch of combos going on on the screen and they think to themselves, well, I'll never be able to do those combos, so I'm not going to be good enough to actually play this game. That's one misconception that they have. Uh, another misconception that they have is I need to be able to do combos in order to enjoy this game with my friends who are much better than me because they're just going to beat me up over and over if I don't have these combos. That's where a lot of the problems with new players sort of start. They have a lot of knowledge in front of them and they don't know how to absorb it uh, in a digestible manner. So, of course, what they see visually happening on screen is the combo game because that's the easiest thing to understand for them. To that I say, well we don't actually need to have combos that are very advanced. We can have very simple combos that allow us to, to get into the game without having to invest a huge amount of time into it. And I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who try to play fighting games and their friends are like, uh, here are the combos you need to know. And they list out the notation and when the new player actually goes into training mode and tries those combos, they get stuck because they can't perform the combos and then they lose the motivation to continue playing the game because doing the combos in training mode isn't actually any fun. And that's where we need to take a step back, reanalyze why we're playing fighting games and how to make this process a little bit easier. If I were to ask you, I want you to cook a meal for yourself. You have no experience with cooking whatsoever. You have never picked up any utensil in your life and you need to make a meal somehow. I'm not gonna ask you to give me a, a filet mignon for, for dinner. That's just completely unreasonable. You don't have the knowledge or the skill to be able to do that. If I give you a recipe, you might be able to perform it, but it's gonna be shaky and it's not gonna be very comfortable for you to make it all. You're not gonna have the skill set to be able to follow the instructions on the recipe. So I might start you off with something a little bit more simple, like a peanut butter sandwich, or scrambled eggs, or maybe a bowl of cereal and milk. Something very easy that anybody can do if they just follow my instructions verbally. That's something that we can compare to fighting game combos. If I tell my best friend, who's trying to get into Guilty Gear for the first time, hey, you need to do this extremely long combo because it's important to the character's game plan. They're not gonna be able to do it for a very long time because they haven't built up the skill and knowledge required to be able to execute that. But there are alternative combos that a new player can learn that will help them get there. A lot of modern fighting games have been making combos easier for people. They've been adding things like auto combos where you press one button over and over and that gives you a full combo without any real effort. Now these combos are not very optimal, they don't do a lot of damage, but I think auto combos are important for one reason. And we need to have auto combos because auto combos are a way for players to take their brain off of the execution and focus on the ideas that the game presents them in order to play it. And what do I mean by that? So mashing a button, a single button, like square, if you look at uh, my arcade stick, if I'm mashing just this button over and over and over, I might do an auto combo, but that's not very stimulating to our brains. It doesn't feel very rewarding to, to spam one button, even if you end up doing a really cool combo. Auto combos are mostly for really, really casual people who pick up a fighting game for the first time and have no idea what they're doing. So they'll mash the light or the triangle, sorry, the square button, and they'll do this over and over and they'll get a kick out of it for maybe 15 minutes and then they'll move on. But for people who want to get a little bit more invested into fighting games, this is actually a very useful tool. If we have an auto combo that does the mechanical part of the game for us, that means we can take our brains off of the mechanical process and start applying the way that our character wants to play in the actual match. I see a lot of auto combos end in a special move, a move that uses meter, or a move that ends in a knockdown. And simple combos in the same exact fashion as auto combos 
that will allow us to absorb information at a pace that we can handle. So how do we make the jump from being a button masher uh, to actually doing some relevant combos? Uh, Sagem actually had a very good analogy for this. He compares fighting in combos, specifically killer instinct combos, to making a sandwich. So every combo has two components. Uh, three, technically, but if we go to the bare minimum, you can have a sandwich that has nothing in it. So you have two slices of bread, and we call that your opener and your ender. Your combo must start somehow, and your combo should end somehow. If you have one, but not both of these options, you don't have a combo. You have a slice of bread. That's what we're going to start with. When we start adding more components to the combo, that would be things like the meat of the sandwich or the vegetables of the sandwich that we continuously add as we gain more knowledge about our character and how the game is played. Like I described earlier, every combo in existence has an opener and an ender. And these are the key components that we want to understand as new players because this will help us get around the difficulty of hard combos and get us into the game faster. In Killer Instinct, you can open a combo through multiple ways. You can poke an opponent with a normal and then cancel into a special move. This would be an opener. You can jump on an opponent and land on them with an attack. That's an opener. That's, that's the start of what we want. What do we have as our enders? Well, our enders are very typically special moves, and those enders will give us varying outcomes depending on which ender we use. In Killer Instinct, they actually list out the, the uses of each ender in the command list. So let's take a quick look at So if you look here, I'm playing Sidira, and Sidira has multiple combo enders. So this first ender, Blade Demon, is a launcher ender. So as you can see here, the description says launches the opponent vertically and allows for a juggle. Exactly what it says right here. You would use a sender if you want to juggle the opponent and get a follow-up combo. Uh, if we move on to Recluse, this is an exchange and a hard knockdown ender, meaning it will swap sides with the opponent and give you a hard knockdown. So the opponent takes a lot longer to recover and get back up from the ground after you use this ender. And third, we have Web Cling, which is the damage ender. You use this ender if you think it will kill the opponent, or you don't need the knockdown. And why is this important? Because, well, we have three options here to end our combos. We have the damage route, we have the knockdown route, and the side swap route, and we have the launcher, which is a continuation of your combo. These enders are really important because we want to make sure we end our combos with a specific intent. That is an opener ender. That is the shortest possible combo that is completable in Killer Instinct. You can play an entire match doing just opener ender. Let's not talk about combo breaker. That's a completely separate mechanic that we won't talk about. So we can play the entire game just doing this over and over and over again. Now you might think, okay, that did like no damage at all. Why would I ever want to do that? Like I said earlier, you want to have a sandwich. You don't want one slice of bread. You want two slices of bread. What does that actually mean? If we end our combo correctly, the opponent gets knocked down and we get some sort of advantage because they're knocked down. It doesn't really matter uh, which ender we use for this case. So I'll use the hard knockdown ender that the game told me I can use. So this is the hard knockdown ender. Notice how long it took Sabre to get up from the ground. Because the opponent is knocked down, we're then given an opportunity to play our character without interference from the opponent at all. The opponent cannot do anything to us while they're knocked down. They can't do anything to us while the animation of the ender is happening. And this is really important here. We want to make sure that we do this over and over so that we create situations where we're constantly in control. When we keep our combos short and we end them confidently with combos that we understand, we're the ones in control. And now we can say, okay, I'm in the driver's seat. I can do whatever I want and I don't have to worry about getting knocked down by my opponent. For new players, I definitely would just say, learn one combo, learn how it starts, learn how it ends. Go for that combo the entire match, and eventually you'll get used to performing that sequence of actions, and then you can start expanding into unknown territory. 
Our goal here as new players is to develop a set of skills that we don't have to think about. Eventually, the combo that you choose will become second nature. Now that we've talked about the importance of having a short combo that we can practice over and over, I'd like to give a little bit more context into the consequences of trying to go beyond that before we're quite ready. So this character is designed to set up a web in the corner and make sure that the opponent cannot get out. So this is the example combo that I have for a short combo. Very simple. He's in the web for an eternity and then he gets knocked out. Let's do this simple combo over and over this web and then we can do whatever we want for this entire time. We're in the driver's seat for as long as that web is up. So now we're going to try a hard combo and drop it and see what happens. Okay, so that was a fortunate drop because I dropped it at the safe time so I was able to block in time. But there are very crucial moments where you might drop a combo and get punished for it. Kind of like that. So now, I don't have the freedom of being able to walk all over my opponent who is in the web. I'm actually getting hit and taking a full combo by it by making that mistake. So we definitely don't want to drop combos because we'll end up in a reversal situation where the opponent ends up putting us in the corner potentially. Now that we know we don't want to do hard combos when we're not ready, we want to make sure that we're ready for any situation where our easy combo doesn't work. Let's say the opponent is blocking and we try to do our combo. Well, what happens? This is a very easy punish. That is okay. It is okay to get punished for doing your combo while the opponent is blocking. And why is that? But at least we tried to do the combo that we've been practicing. And now, we know that our combo starts with this move. It starts with this move, and then goes into the next one, and then the third one is the final attack. If our attack gets blocked, we don't have to commit to the full combo. So if we see right around here that the opponent is blocking, we don't have to commit to that full combo. This would be the equivalent of learning maybe the first two steps of a recipe, and then waiting until you have maybe the right ingredients to continue and finish it off. You're still doing the same exact motions that you learned earlier. You're just pausing them until you find a more appropriate time. Once we're used to this combo getting blocked, then we can start learning some other openers. We can start learning uh, other ways to start a combo. In general, when you're learning a new combo, one of the easiest ways to see if something will combo is to do a normal attack, like a crouching B attack or a crouching medium attack. And then you just do a special move and see if it connects. If it doesn't connect, then hey, you try something else. Try a different special move, maybe that works. Or if your game has a cancel system, maybe you cancel. These are the kinds of options that you won't know at first. But these are also options that you will not understand until you play the game more. And how do we understand those options? Well, we gotta start with the simple combos and then we get the knockdown, and then we can say, okay, we're not thinking about the combos anymore, we're thinking about the system mechanics and the ways for us to open up our opponent in different ways than before. And that is the very basics of learning fighting game combos as a newcomer. 